Hello everyone, welcome back to Selenium Web Driver Tutorial. In the last video, we have seen uh, different type of locators available in Selenium. And in this video, we are going to see how to use uh, those locators uh, to interact with the web element. So what we are going to do right now is uh, we are going to enter some text in the Google search text box using uh, different type of allocators. That is what we are going to see right now. So first, uh, these are all the list of uh, locators available in uh, Selenium. First one is ID, name, class name, tag name, link text, partial link text, CSS and finally XPath. So come let's uh, see how to use those elements. So this is a code that we have written in the very first video. And now I'm going to declare a variable of a data type web element. The variable name is text box. So if you see, I have declared a variable text box and I'm going to assign this search text box locators to this variable text box. Text box equal to driver dot find element first we are going to locate by id so i should use a method called find element by dot id so if you see this uh, by dot id accept one argument and we have to copy paste the id of this google search text box inside this argument in order to interact with the Google search text box. So let's say, let's see how to find the Google search text box uh, ID. So just watch me carefully. Click on this uh, Google search text and do a right click and select an option inspect. Here you will see that uh, source code of uh, text box gets highlighted here and you have to find where the ID is. So the ID is in the very first line. If you do a double click, it will highlight the ID. Use Ctrl plus C to copy this ID and go back to the script and copy it here. Put it inside the double quotation. So we have uh, finally find an element of uh, this uh, Google search text box and assign this to a variable text box. So what uh, I want to do right now is I want to enter some text in the Google search text box. So I should use a method called send case. So let's say I want to enter a word Amarinda's in the Google search. Save the script and execute it now and let's see how it works. So it opened the Chrome browser, navigated to Google and entered the text but you couldn't see that uh, uh, after it uh, as soon as it entered uh, it gets closed so if you want to see we have to add a wait time thread dot slip uh, will make it wait for two seconds now let's execute and see how it works so it has opened google and navigated to and entered the text and waited for two seconds after that it gets closed so this is how locate by id works now let's see how to locate by name so we have to do the same stuff but instead of id we have to replace that with name so i will rep I, I will replace this id with a name and you have to put the name of uh, google search text box here so the name is if you see that name is q copy this q and put it inside the double quotation I will comment out this. Let's execute this on how this locate by name works. So again it opened. Navigated to Google. Yes, uh, you can able to interact the text box by its name as well. And next thing is class name. So let's see how to locate by class name let's copy paste this one and i will comment out this one so instead of name i have to use a method called class name and inside the parenthesis i have to give the class name of text box so class name we can able to find it in the very first line copy this class name of search text box and put it in the inside this method by that class name 
let's execute and see how it works so it has entered a word and finally close it to the browser so this is how locate by class name works and now the next thing is locate by tag name am i right yes so now let's see how to locate by tag name so tag name this uh, tag name method is normally used to get the collection of web elements so if you if you want to get the list of uh, all links or if you want to get the list of uh, uh, text box or if you want to get the list of uh, buttons available in the web element we normally use a tag name or most commonly it is used in a table if you want to fetch a data from the web table we, we could use that uh, uh, we could use this uh, tag name to fetch and in, or enter some value in the web table so that's how tag name is used now we will use that uh, tag name to get the links available in um, the google page so these are all uh, the hyperlinks if you see gmail images advertising business so these are all the hyperlinks we are going to fetch all the links available in the google web page using the tag name so if, oh, i should use a method called by dot tag name to get the list now let's say uh, we first we have to declare a variable of uh, list with the data type of web element so let me declare a variable of data type web element and let's name this variable as all links equal to driver dot find elements i should use a method called find elements because this find elements is a method which i return the list you can see that variable here it returned the list and that's why we have declared a variable of a data type list so we have to use a method find elements and by dot tag name so i want to get the tag name of hyperlink list. so i should use the hyperlink tag so if you want to inspect that you could see that it belong to a tag name a so i should use a tag name a to get the list of uh, all links available in the Google web page so I should uh, I'm going to use a for loop to print the links in Google web page so let's define a for loop and I is equal to starts with a for loop should starts with zero and it should be lesser than the size of uh, links that is uh, uh, fetched from the Google web page. So I'm using all links dot size to get the total number of uh, links available in the Google web page and I increment this with the increment operator. Now I'm going to use a sysout and we will print the text. We will print the link text. So I should uh, use all links dot get get is a method which uh, return the index of uh, the web element so this index starts with uh, zero and it iterate up to the last link uh, it's having so i should use a method get to get the list of index and again i should use a method get text to print the text of actual link so that you could see here i have used the system dot out dot print all links dot get i dot get text get uh, the links available in the google web page so now let's execute and see how it works now it's fetching all the links available on the google web page once it is done it gets closed that you can see the links here gmail images sign in and list of languages privacy terms advertising business support etc uh, you could see the uh, empty values here because uh, it contain links but it doesn't have text so we are done with the uh, locate by tag name now link text so let's see how this uh, link text work So what I want to do right now is uh, I want to click on this uh, Gmail link using uh, a method called a link text. 
so i should uh, first find element by dot link text and inside the link text i have to copy paste this link it should be case sensitive so if it is uh, starts with a capital letter you have to follow that as well so it's just a gmail let me type this gmail so driver dot finally find the element of uh, this uh, gmail link and i want to perform an operation click so let's execute and see how it works so it navigated and clicked on the gmail page now it takes us to the gmail link and finally it gets closed so this is how link text works and uh, now let's see how this uh, partial link text works driver dot find element instead of link text you, you have to use a method called partial links link text so i want to i'm going to use this one use google.com instead of use google.com i'm going to enter a word google but uh, i want uh, this as a name to click on this use google.com link we can do that using a partial link text type google here but as i said uh, in the last video you, you should um, ensure that uh, this text whatever the text you are going to use in the partial link text should not be duplicated if it is duplicated whichever the uh, first link available in the uh, web page uh, the selenium will click on that link so now let's execute and see how it works So it navigated and again it clicked on this uh, Google link I hope that's why we are seeing this uh, Google India but let's check it out so after I click on this link it is taking to the same page so that is why we are uh, not seeing any changes but it's finally clicked this partial link text and we are done with the partial link text next one is css by css so i will create a separate video for a different uh, how to locate element in a different ways using css but just for this video oh, we will go ahead with a uh, one single approach driver dot so i'm going to enter a, a text in a google search text box so i should use a method I should uh, use the variable text box equal to driver dot find element by dot css selector. I should use a method css selector and inside the css selector I have to pass the css selector value of uh, this text box. So this css selector value uh, we are very well know that this since it is a text box it belongs to a tag name called input that you can find it here. It belongs to a tag name input and we will see how to locate that with the css selector so uh, there are numerous ways to define css selector as i said we will see that later but uh, uh, this is one approach using id so if you want to locate using id with css you should use a tag name followed by hash and then id you should copy paste the id from here So tag name hash id and once it is done we will enter the text so it entered the word amarindas and get closed so this is how css works and now let's see how xpath works let me comment out, comment out this by xpath i will copy paste this instead of css selector you have to replace this with xpath and you have to give the xpath value so there are uh, uh, plugins available in uh, 
both Chrome and uh, Mozilla Firefox I will create a uh, new videos especially for XPath because there are two different type of XPath one is an absolute and another one is a relative and in the relative there are n number of ways to get the XPath of a particular web element that we will see in the later video we will see how this uh, uh, actually XPath work in this video so I will uh, I will go to my Mozilla Firefox So let me navigate to Google. So I have installed uh, a plugin called uh, Firepath and uh, Firebag, which helps me to get the XPath. So just click on the search uh, Google search text box and click on the inspect element. I hope my plugins work on it's not uh, installed on this uh, Mozilla version so let's go ahead with uh, this uh, Chrome itself so how XPath normally works means um, driver.xpath we have to use input and inside the square bracket you have to declare at id equal to and inside this ID you have to provide the ID so let me show you first you have to define tag name and inside the tag name you have to use a type and its value sorry attribute and its value ID is an attribute and the value of uh, ID is LST that you have to declare after an assignment operator and you have to enclose that ID value inside the uh, quotation so now let's see how it works unable to locate an element so we have to use a symbol called slash slash since we are using a relative xpath so just don't worry about this i will create a new video on how to work with xpath just for this video let's understand that our relative xpath should begin with double slash now let's execute this and see how it works So it entered the word Amarandas and finally closed. So this is how the locators works in Selenium. In the next video, we will explore more about our Selenium web driver. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, give thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.